Hey everybody, it brings me great pleasure to welcome someone who's a close personal friend and that who's been delivering the meat and potatoes for Creative Life since way back in the day when we were just young pups. Um, one of the most important things that, that I think business, like that, that photographers can think about when they think about actually paying for things like insurance and food and a livelihood is what to think about business, and there's nobody better to deliver this brilliant information than the insightful, beautiful, and always on the ball, Tamara hmm. Lackey. I told him to say all that. <laughs> this is from my cue cards right here. No. Very good. I actually didn't tell him to say that. Good, we're ready to go? Excellent. Um, that was a clip I interviewed Chase yesterday for Redefine. I'll be talking about that. We'll be showing some clips throughout the course of the program. Um, but it came about because he was saying he has to jump out to New York and he was bummed to miss my intro. And I said, well, why don't you go ahead and do it now? And he goes, hi. <laughs> and that's why I was laughing when we started because it was that immediate. <clears throat> well, thank you everybody for being here. So which camera? Okay, red camera. Yes? I go to red camera. Um, we are going to be covering a lot. If you can see on the screen in our fantastic presentation here, um, all of that is our course. So you can just go ahead and do a screenshot of this and just embed all the knowledge immediately. It's that good. Um, but I was here last November uh, teaching the children's portrait photography course and I was blown away by um, the dynamic here at Creative Live and the, the friend, friendliness and the genuine warmth and the actual intention to be able to spread this knowledge as widely as possible and now more as often as possible. The, course, the courses have you know, picked up and there's a lot more going on. And, um, and when they asked me to come back, I was just like, why wouldn't I? So we have developed a course here that is um, almost exactly brand new. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of information in it. And um, I actually sent a message out to a bunch of people I've done workshops with saying, tune in, this is a big compliment um, to everything I've been teaching in face to face. So let's get started. I'm, I'm using new equipment here. So we're just going to assume it's all working, and it is so far. Um, so taking care of business. I have a little bit of a theory about the idea of art versus business, and that is that when I meet people who tell me they're great artists, but they don't really know much about business, or they say, you know what, I, I got business down pat, I'm just not very artsy, you know, I'm just not really the creative type. Um, my theory is that a lot of people assign these roles for themselves um, for a whole variety of reasons, but one reason is that it's just a little more comfortable or a little bit more precise to be able to say I'm this or that. And um, most of the people I work with who come in and saying they're very artsy and very creative and they just don't have a head for business um, leave after kind of going through a lot of things saying, well, gosh, I guess a lot of this is, is the skills I'm using every day in my art and my creativity. I just never thought of it from that perspective. And a lot of what I want to do here today in this whole mess of stuff we're going to go through is reframe a lot of the thoughts you're having so that you can better embrace the excited, you know, meaningful, creative aspects of business. I think business is extremely creative. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through some tools that you can use, some methodologies, but some really action item oriented things that when you get out of here, you're like, okay, what do I do next? How do I have a list? And by the way, I have to say, all of your, your eye contact here are just fantastic. <laughs> I'm loving this. I love it. People are looking a lot less nervous suddenly. Are you guys suddenly feeling less nervous? Yeah. Very like, nice. we're like, let's go, right? Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> I like it. I was asking them earlier to, oh my god. <laughs> this is a really cute looking straw, but it might be very, very dangerous. Um, I was asking our live audience here to, as quickly as possible, try to whew, just get it out. Forget the fact that there's a lot of people watching and be here because that's the best way you guys are going to benefit and also the best way I'm going to be able to teach you. So thank you already. Um, so my hope is with this class that you'll stay with me and you'll recognize that um, tuning into the aspects of yourself that are already knowledgeable about business uh, will really help you to take everything to the next level and help you better recognize that being good at business is not only smart but also lucrative and meaningful, adds a, a whole layer of meaning to your business. It allows you to continue the things that you want to do, the things that you love to do. And I'm just going to put it out there, it's kind of sexy. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> We're going to bring hotness to business. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, okay, let's see if this works. Dun, dun, dun. 
Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> How could your company change if you had as much affection for your business as you had for your art? Do you know what I mean by this? I mean, I was could you, could you as see? much time working on our company. And, and, and not just working on it, not just placing importance, but having affection for it. Right. Do you know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of people that I respect and appreciate and recognize their value, but I don't have a lot of affection for them. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think being able to look as lovingly as your business as an entity and having an affection for it allows you to prioritize all the stuff you need to do to kind of take you to the next level, you know, or keep you at the level you want to stay at long term. Mm -hmm. So um, the analogy would be simply um, if you're out there as a photographer, so, and that's what I'm going to refer to. This is about you know, creativity, that, you know, being creative in business. But as a photographer, I can tell you that um, first couple years in business, I just wanted to take a bunch of pretty pictures. And that's a lot of what I did. But if you use the analogy of driving a race car, if all you want to do is race and race and race and race and just get out there, but you have no idea how your car works, how to keep it running, um, when you need to stop and take a pit stop. <laughs> 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 Maybe I should have used an analogy I know more about. Um, and um, you're basically going to find that your car, just like you're going to hear that knocking noise. Do that, does that still happen? Or is that like old-timey cars? You're going to hear like this knocking noise. Your, your car is going to basically stop running. Your <laughs> engine's going to burn out. And that brings us back to creative burnout. Did you see what I did there? Well done. Very nice. <laughs> Very well done. Thing. Thank you. Thank you. Whew, that was amazing. Um, and it's the same thing with your business. If you're out there just taking a lot of beautiful pictures and you're having great client interactions and um, the shoots are flooding in, but you have no idea how to make things work and how to calm it down, that's what you need to do. Do you guys recognize that feeling like when things are all over the place and you feel like you're just reacting all the time and you need to calm it down? Yes, yes. yes. can I get an amen? Amen. Yes. Yes. Can I get six <laughs> amens? <laughs> This is what I mean about having affection for your business, recognizing that you can't drive and drive and drive and drive if you don't even know how your vehicle works and you don't know how to keep it um, taken care of and you don't know how to enhance it, right? Okay. That's a little bit of a pause. Let's talk about what we're gonna talk about today. This is our agenda. So where we left off, this was the in now infamous whiteboard, right? Um, if you saw the last show, uh, we're going we're gonna to get to that in a minute. We're going to show you a three-minute video when we get there. But if you saw the last segment, we talked about um, a lot of questions. What do you have to think about? What do you have to think about? Um, in this segment, we're going to start doing a lot of answers. <laughs> Number two, we're going to talk about how doing it all will take you down. Um, this is uh, the beauty of business process workflow and the, um, how impactful it is to understand what you need to outsource and how you can do it no matter what level your business is at. Number three is uh, creating an online presence. So, I mean, obviously, interwebs. How do you get on there everywhere? Um, what is the brand culture of your company? Who are you? And that, we're going to go into some really good detail because in my experience, a lot of people say things like, um, be yourself. And people say, okay. And they're like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to really dig into that. Um, and marketing, marketing that works. If we're going to do marketing, make it marketing that works. Uh, strategy to action, doing the work. How do you take an overall vision and break it down into bite-sized chunks? And more importantly, motivate yourself to actually do those parts. I mean, you can break it down like crazy, but if it's all sitting in front of you and you're like, yeah, there's a lot to do. <laughs> I should go get a drink. <laughs> um, real client service, and I emphasize real because a lot of people know that they have to um, have client service as part of their business parameters and, and how they go about bringing in business and closing sales. But what does real client service mean? And how, if you adapt that to your business, can it run the whole way through in terms of converting to sales at the end of the day. Um, money, finance, cash flow, profit. We're gonna dig into to cash. I mean, cash is how you power your business. And I know people will feel a little bit like, ugh, money. But that is how you fuel your business. That's the gas you put in that race car I told you about. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing it back. Get, yeah, I know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it all week long. Get legit, legal considerations that you need to make sure that you're keeping in check because you could be putting all this hard work in 
and get shut down or fined or get fees or all sorts of things. And it's not, not little warnings. They happen all the time. So just making sure you've got this stuff taken care of. Um, small shifts, big changes. Examine your attitude. I kind of sound like I'm talking to my kids a little bit, like examine your attitude. But your mindset, the, these small little shifts can yield huge results. And I'm talking very tangible changes in your business. Sales, 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 sales. This section we added about a month ago, because everybody kept saying, are you going to be talking about sales? <laughs> and then go forth and conquer. How do we wrap this all up in a way that has you walking out of here, changing things right away, and not just having great theories? All right, Love so it. what do you think of the agenda? Come on, give it Excellent. to me. Excellent. Fabulous. Awesome. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. Let's go now. <laughs> <laughs> Why, we are. Um, one thing I want to talk about in terms of going, you know, business start, I've heard it said, and I'm going to paraphrase, but roughly that um, business is all left brain and selling yourself, and creativity is all right brain and being yourself. Does that resonate? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's true? No. Yeah. Can you see the benefit of a whole mind approach? Yeah, like no parts of the brain attacking each other. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Liken it to, we're driving that car, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to drop the analogy after a little while, but this one's good. <laughs> <laughs> we're driving that car. And one part of our brain is um, doing these amazing scientific calculations of distance and speed and ratio and, you know, like a millionth of a second, I know exactly what angle to turn to pull into a parking lot. Like, why do I know that? Like, it's amazing. Another part of you is listening to the radio and humming along to the music and crying because this woman just got dumped and she loves him so much. <laughs> and these are like your brain and your heart and it's all working at the same time and you don't question it. You don't feel like, well, I can only drive or I can only listen to music. Usually. Now, of course, we also text and drive, which we shouldn't. Never text and drive. <laughs> um, OK, so we're going to get into it. Here we go. Um, why don't we kick off with, <gasps> there it is. Why don't we kick off with a three-minute <laughs> overview Whoa. of what we did last time to set us up for what we're about to do. Sound good? Yes. Yeah. yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Take well, it away. We're going to start out right away uh, just going ahead and thinking about if you have a business and you want to start it or grow it or make it more efficient or make it more profitable, what are the things you have to consider? You're shooting, but what are you, what are you doing before you're shooting? You have to Marketing. get the client. You have to get the client. You're constantly updating pricing and products. So you're backing up, I would strongly suggest, to a minimum of three places. So what else? When you're um, selling, and delivering, you've got to think about packaging, right? How are you packaging your products? All the financial stuff you've got to think about, whether it comes to invoicing, um, reporting, um, sales tax, quarterly payments to a federal tax, um, any sort of expense tracking, bank statement reconciliation. It's a huge, huge thing, being able to see where your money's going. I've got to evaluate the time that I'm paying my studio manager to manage the inquiries and put all that together and um, all those efforts. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And I want to take a percentage of the amount of time I spent on marketing, on website development, on branding, on accounting, everything. And that's all going to be factored in because you have to know that about your business before you can even figure out how to build a brand. So there's an expectation you set simply by the look and feel of your brand. That's point number one about the fact that this brand development, website development, SEO is not where you want to be skimping when you think about where do I want to put my dollars. We all know that costs of sales are not always dollars. They're like tears and I'm tired and why am I still doing this? And um, tracking, you want really, really good tracking. You want to see that the stuff you sent out, where, who opened it up, how long they were checking it out, what percentage of people opened it up and what amount of time. That's another thing you have to think when you're building your business is all the legal stuff. Like not only how are you setting up your company in terms of what you know, setup are you using, whether it's an LLC or a partnership or a sole proprietorship, but also how are you going to do transactions with your clients and what are you liable for and what are you not liable for and how are you protecting yourself legally when it comes to any sort of thing, especially when you get into weddings, but also with portraits. Th these vendors, you build relationships with them because they're your team. They are your studio staff by extension. And do I want people looking at their images thinking here? No, I want it all here. I want it to be about like the images, you know, that's what they're buying and that's what I want them to think about and care about. Look at this. We haven't even got, I know. we haven't fired a click yet. Yeah, we haven't. Nobody's shooting. <laughs> This is all happening and nobody's shooting yet. This is just what we're starting with. When we're talking about what you need to do to run, maintain, and take care and grow a successful business. Everything that you're doing here, where's your profit coming in? 
from your sales? It, this part. Everything you're going to do with every session you do, you're going to do every time regardless of how much you sell at the end. So why would you do 90% of all the work and then get to that last 10% and say, oh, whatever, okay, here you go. Dang. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. Well, and that leaves us, this is what we were left with, right? Get all those questions. This was inadvertently brilliant because <laughs> it was not planned. But the fact that we left all this on the board and said, oh my god, we're out of time, gotta go. Like being a therapist, and like you hit that breakthrough and she's like, ding. <laughs> we got here and then we were like, there is, there's a lot of questions, there's all of this that you have to take care of, um, and now what? So this is the now what. We're gonna go into a clean process flow and we're gonna say, let's clean all of this up. We started with four sections, shooting, editing, saving, selling, and delivery. Let's now take all of these things and put them into cleaner chunks and walk through them and walk you through it so that you could be doing this on your own. Because I think what happens is you find out you have so much to do. It's like you end up taking this deep breath, you get overwhelmed. I don't know how you numb or soothe yourself. <laughs> but um, when you're not doing that, you think the bare minimum I, I can handle is to just keep plugging away. And yet all that does is put you on a day-to-day -day basis it has you in a situation where you're just reacting. You're not being proactive. You're not setting the schedule. You're responding to everybody else's agenda. And that's yep. a very panicky way to do business. That feels like you're always underwater. Your list is going to be forever long. Um, and and it's, it's just it's something that it's hard for me to watch when, when I sit down and talk with people, because it seems like they're trying to do something they love, and they want to go for it. And, um, and they're always right on that precipice of, can I do it? You know, and that, that, that's painful because they usually have a lot of tools at their disposal. They just need to rein it in to kind of go to that next level. So as we start going into that next section, the cleaner flowchart, um, I would love in the pre-show banner, we did a, a, you know, everyone ran around for eight seconds and said your name kind of nervously. <laughs> um, now, now that this is like, psh, I've been here forever. <laughs> Um, I would love to kind of go around the couches, the slick couches. By the way, did, has anybody mentioned this new set? Very nice. I, did. I love awesome. this set. I love this new set. I'm thrilled. Tell me the name of our designer. Do you remember? I we want to make do. sure we give a shout out to him in a second. But um, yes, this was a, um, a really cool little endeavor. Um, but uh, what I'd love to do is kind of start here and have you guys say your names, where you're from, a brief overview of what you're most looking to get out of this course and why you submitted your video for it. And lastly, the most humiliating thing that's ever happened to you that you've never told a soul, but go ahead and tell us now. No, I'm kidding about the last one. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Everything but that most humiliating thing ever. Great. See, that, that just put into context how much easier the rest of this will be. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm Courtney, mm -hmm. and I'm from Portland, Oregon. And I guess what I would love to be getting out of this class is just I kind of feel like I'm all over the place and I still work full time and I'm trying to do a million things and I just really want to focus and like get my business in line and orderly and get everything, all my ducks in a row so that like eventually I can do this full time. Yes, perfect. I'm Erica, I'm from Seattle and um, I would say the biggest thing I want to get out of this course is just a better solid workflow because of what you're talking about. Um, and tending to jump around and not knowing where to prioritize or what to uh, take care of first. Um, so I think that just having an action plan and being able to focus, like Courtney said. Perfect. Yeah. I'm Jesse Clements. Hello again. I am from Orlando, Florida, as I said. And um, the thing that I really am looking forward to getting out of this is some structure, um, some focus planning. Because one of the things that I find being a photographer and just with so much stimulus coming from so many different channels in the industry, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ideas. And that's kind of what I said in my video, was there's so many different concepts out there. And so really grateful to be able to come here and spend two days really digging in. And I'm hoping to be able to execute some A, Bs, and Cs walking out of here. No Wonderful. pressure. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> a, B, C, D, E, yes. From where in Washington? Arlington, Washington. Arlington, Washington. About 45 minutes north of Seattle. Okay. And I am really hoping to have something sort of like a plan, to where to go, how to start, because I'm really at the point where I'm not doing much. I'm trying to get everything going, and I, 
I keep going there and going here, and people are telling me to, oh, you should do that, don't forget to do that, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And I have no idea, you know, where, where I'm really supposed to be. So yeah. someone tell me, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will. <laughs> Uh, I'm Carolyn, and I'm from Fanwood, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I, what I'm most looking to get out of this is, at this I just quit my full-time job in April, yes. and things are going well, and I'm about to hit into a very busy fall season. I've got most of my sessions booked, which is awesome. Uh -huh. But I'm scared about how much time everything's going to take, and making sure that I'm not up till three in the morning every night, that I have time for my family, that it's not overwhelming for me or my family, and that my clients feel like they are my top priority and that everything goes well and everything's smooth and my process goes well. So I just need to get more organized. And there's a few of those like back-end business things that I just haven't gotten done yet and I want to make sure I'm not letting things, you know, kind of, I don't want things falling through the cracks. Right, because you said in your video, you had the image of you at the desk overwhelmed <laughs> late at night. <laughs> like, this is it, this is it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that's how, and we had tried, I had tried with the kids to make a recording earlier that day, but my daughter didn't hit record, she hit stop before. <laughs> And so the part where I was speaking didn't work, and I didn't realize that until 11 o'clock at night when the kids were in bed and my husband was traveling. I was like, okay, <laughs> and now I need a video. So that's how that one Perfect. came about. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I'm um, Donovan. I'm from New Orleans, and um, see, I'm, I'm like I think Kelly and I, I, I can sort of uh, relate a little more. I, I'm very much a square one kind of person on the business side of it. I, I had a day job where doing all this was so much of a hobby that and it, it I got enough exposure online that where people were calling me oh well you seem professional what do you what are your rates I'm like oh, uh, I'll talk to you later bye <laughs> and um <laughs> and they're like yeah yeah and they're like well you never call me back I'm like yeah I know um <laughs> and so I yeah and, and so really it's just it's because of because of the time it was um cultivating but it uh, cultivating photography but not but just not having to worry about the business side of it and stuff. And now, now that I do, because I also I'm also tr freelancing between um, well, freelance a couple of different things. But photography is the the meat of oh, it. Is it DJing and yeah, it's DJing. I, and my day job used to be design, so I'm still doing that freelance. But um, yeah, it, it's not it's I'm not being overwhelmed with clients right now. I, actually, most of it is is how do I go and get them? Get them? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, and on top and and how do I price it? And how do, and on, like and you know you go online, you look stuff and. Um, you, you can go to like three or four different photographers, all very reputable, and they all have completely different systems of how they, it seems like how they try to present all of that to, to, to their to clients or whatever. Right. And, and so you just get confused. And I, You're I like, think, which one? Right, what, yeah. what's correct? Which one's wrong? Why is it wrong? Yeah. And so that's, um, that's what I'm hoping to get from this, is to, is to at least to know like this is, this is a sound plan and, and I can move forward with this. Yeah, and, and you know what I like about that, and I wanna to respond to that last part right away because um, I can tell you right now, um, there is like a, I can think of a group of about three or four photographers that I know very well, that I'm very close with. Um, I understand their business models very well. They're highly successful um, in a few different areas. And you could lay all of our business models out across the board and they are just completely different. Mm -hmm. So if what you're feeling is you get a sense of that when you're looking from the outside, that's because it's true. <laughs> and to me, that is so heartening. There's not just one path. There's not just one path. And so you make your path based on who you are, which is what we're gonna get in mm -hmm. to next. And there's some parameters that will help you. You're like, okay, do what you want, but you really should have this. <laughs> like everybody has at least this. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but for the most part, in terms of what's the way to get there, that's, that's the best part, you know? The way to get there is um, when you dig deep inside and figure out what you have to offer, you follow that path. So let, let's, let's go into that because um, I'm a huge believer that if you try to emulate somebody else, you're failing. And I think we talked about, there's, I'm on a forum, I, I did a presentation at WPI on life work fusion, about how to be um, like alive and present in your life, but also have a, a business that goes, it's the whole idea of life work balance. And there was a um, forum that popped up afterwards. You're like, I did it, did you? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, that was me. Um, but, uh, but I remember there being a thread about the idea of um, which way do I go and who do I follow and, and um, should I mute this to get you know, more ahead? And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, yeah. no, 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 that's the opposite. Mm -hmm. So let's jump through that. Okay. Um, let's clean this up, shall we? 
Ah. Did you feel that? Watch. Okay, this is the sound effect here. Ah! Sound effect here. Ah. All right, so um, let's talk about these one by one. First of all, let's just knock this out of the way. At the very beginning, before you're setting up your business structure, even if you've been in business for 10 years, check and make sure you're covering this stuff. The stuff that you've got your legal, your tax, your your incorporated correctly. Um, make, make sure that you have your main structure set up. We're going to get into that when we get to get legit, so no worries. But that's how everything should start before you start going through a nice clean path of that order we want to see. So now let's go through this. So marketing, publicity, and promotioning. Um, if you notice, I have marketing, publicity, and promotion as separate from eliciting and managing client inquiries because marketing is a strategy, eliciting inquiries or lead generation is an activity. And we're gonna get into that when we jump into marketing, but um, make sure you treat them as separate items when you're thinking about what your process flow is so you can really truly do each of them well. Converting inquiries to booking, that needs to be its own bucket. The amount of people I, who I talk to say, well, I'm marketing, I'm doing all this, and I've only got this many shoots. And I'm like, what about that middle part when they call you? That's the part that you really want to nail down. Are you booking one out of every 15 people? Or, you know, or are you getting, because you could get 15 calls. And if you book all 15, like, oh my god, you're amazing. But if you book, if you are getting one call and you book it, and you get 15 calls, you book it, you have a better ratio if you're booking every one you get versus getting 15 calls and losing all that time and energy and money on 14 people who aren't going to go with you. You see the logic in that? Really focusing energy on converting your inquiry to booking is a big, big deal that I think a lot of people brush past. Performing the service as a photographer, that for me, that's photographing the session. Producing the results, that's editing the images. Sales. Sales is um, its own standalone goodness because, again, that's something I think it skimmed past a little bit, and we're going we're gonna to walk through the process for that. But recognizing that you don't commit to doing any additional work until you have funds in hand to help manage your cash flow better. You deliver the completed work. And then in addition, that's not where it ends. You don't end at deliver the completed work. Then you get into pre-sales. You're following up for your next sale. You're assuming the sale in the most egoless way possible. It's the idea of how can we better service you going forward and really maintain this wonderful client relationship. And then it's requesting re referrals and ensuring that you can have some promotion by word of mouth marketing. We're going to talk about a lot of methods for marketing, but let's just cut to the chase. Word of mouth marketing is where it's at. That is where people believe that you are worth calling because of how they heard about you. And then back to marketing, publicity, and promotion. That's on the front and on the end because it should be constantly happening. If you get to the point where you're so overwhelmed and you kind of pull back things so you don't have to worry about it, that's where in like eight, nine months you're like, dang, my business is run dry. <laughs> like no matter how well you're doing, you need to constantly have this going. It's a constant thing that you're doing. So. Let's talk about how to make this yours. This is, this is a really good sample of how I do it in my studio. And I have this really cleanly set up because within each bucket, there's a list that corresponds that breaks it down. Very detailed items of what do you do? When I say marketing, what do you do? When I say convert and create a booking, what do those conversations sound like? You know, what are the emails that are going out? How are they written? Um, this is something that you need to do on your own in this very clean fashion 